Otter, it's great to be back. NFL Combine draft season, best time of the year. We all know it. Yeah, we absolutely do, Mad Mel. Excited to see you around again. You look fantastic. I got to be with you at the Combine. What was the Combine experience like for you, and uh, what did you learn? Did you learn anything over there, Mad Mel? Well, everyone knows the Combine's, you know, uh, kind of the social hour for everybody every single year. Uh, but, but you hear from all these insiders, all these different people, hey, I'm hearing this from this guy. I'm hearing this about this player. That's all horse shit, okay? When you go to the combine, or at least when I go to the combine, what you do is you tell people what they need to do, okay? <laughs> That's, it's as simple as that. Listen, I have the keys to success. I know exactly what every single team in the NFL needs to do to win a Super Bowl next year, okay? Now, granted, there are about you know 17 to 18 teams, and it doesn't matter what the fuck they do in the draft. <laughs> They're not going to have a uh, you know a chance in hell to win, but that, that doesn't mean I don't know what they need to do to kind of you know get over the hump, so to speak, and not be a horseshit franchise. Uh, for example, talk to a couple people. You know, uh, Brandon Beat, GM of the Buffalo Bills, uh, good friend of mine, close personal friend of mine. At least I consider him a close personal friend. Uh, pretty simple. Got in there, you know. I mean, we were, we were kind of trading notes a little bit, and I just told him straight up, "Hey, listen, Brandon. All right." You need an explosive talent on the offensive end, whether that be you know tight end, maybe another running back, maybe a guy in the Ooh. slot, or maybe you know a guy on the outside. Because it's pretty simple, okay? We saw what happened last year in the playoffs. You know the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. You know the big bad wolf. Uh, obviously, you know Noah. No, listen, I'm not going to get into that, okay? The big bad wolf. He, he's been put down, but. Chiefs holic? Is what? that what you're talking about? Yeah, Matt, I'm, I'm talking about Chiefs holic. Okay. He was not at the playoff game in Buffalo. No, he wasn't. He wasn't because they they put him down like a dog, like he oh. deserved to be put down. Okay, <laughs> but again, that's neither here nor there. I just, I, but I told Brandon Bean, pretty simple. Hey, listen, you get an explosive talent unless you want, you know, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Andy Reid, all the boys to come into Buffalo in the playoffs. And, you know, kind of treat it like a fucking middle school snow day, okay? They're doing <laughs> snow angels on the field after the game. They're playing around, throwing snowballs, having a fun, making a mockery of the Buffalo Bills. Buffalo Bills have all the requisite talent they need to make a deep run in the playoffs, you know, win the division damn near every single year. Great football team, but you got to get over that big bad wolf. you got to get an explosive piece. He knows that whether or not he wants to listen. I'm not going to give you, you know, the full book on who I told him to take, who I like, you know, which guy. Guys, I think it kind of unlock that extra potential of Josh Allen that we've seen all these years. Um, but I let him know, okay? And yeah. whether or not he wants to take that advice, that's completely up to him. I did see you getting escorted out of the Buffalo Bills suite. That wasn't because you were just telling him what he needs to do. That no, was no, no, absolutely not. You know, it, it, tough to find a, a bite around there. So I, I grabbed a, a burger or two, you know, maybe a couple bags of chips. Apparently, I, I was not allowed to do that, okay? okay? No one told me, hey, don't eat all their fucking food. Got a great spread. Pumpkin no pie. one's touched it. Pump, didn't have any pumpkin pie, okay? If they had pumpkin pie, like, listen, that's Mel's, okay? And everyone, yeah. everyone knows that's Mel's. Okay, so after you get escorted out of the Buffalo Bills suite and, uh, you know, it sounds like Sounds like Brandon Bean was very uh, welcoming to all of your ideas and opinions on how to run an NFL team, even though you've never done that. No, right? but he should be. Yeah, he should I, be. agreed, agreed. You got, you found your way into the cold suite, didn't you? I think you went down and saw yourself at the cold suite. Is yeah, that right? Yeah, Ooh. I did. You know, everyone knows that uh, Chris Ballard and IGM, the Indianapolis Colts, have a bit of a spotted pass. He's kind of shit on me a couple times in our past, you know, draft coverage, draft spectaculars, and that's fine. You know, we could be at odds. Uh, we didn't really talk too much personnel. Kind of the first thing that jumped off the page when I sat down with him was, Holy shit, this son of a bitch is jacked, okay? <laughs> so I don't know if this guy needs to be making personnel decisions. Maybe he needs to, you know, institute himself as the strength and conditioning coach. Ooh. I considered that, you know, I mean, he's absolutely massive. His lettuce is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Very, very similar, you know, Boston Cotter back in your studio. Wow. He's got a very nice kind of feathery mullet coming out of the back mm. of his hat. But I basically just told him, hey, listen, if you get your offensive and defensive line to kind of get all the same uh, strength conditioning plan that you're on, because you are a big, mean son of a bitch right now, then maybe we won't have to worry about Anthony Richardson getting hurt in the third game oh, of the NFL season oh, next year. Oh, hey, oh, listen, oh, listen, oh, listen, oh. listen. That's all I said. I, I wasn't saying, hey, get this guy, get this guy, get this guy. I think Anthony Richardson has all the tools necessary to be an elite NFL quarterback, but I think if they want to do that, Chris Ballard needs to get down of the way 
weight room and start clagging and banging with the boys because he is fucking huge. Okay, uh, I appreciate hearing that as an Indianapolis Colts fan. I like to know that, you know, we got some dogs all over the place. Colts do need to protect Anthony Richardson. Anthony Richardson needs to protect Anthony Richardson. I think everybody has high hopes. Uh, I, did I see, you know, because I think I was there with you, actually, uh, we ran into a friend of the program, Artie Smith. Ooh, huh? How about oh, that? You want to see for the Let's Pittsburgh go. Steelers, uh, Mad Mel. You and him go way back, right? Is yeah, that- we, we do. Man, already been friends for a very long time. Uh, he's uh, you know, one of my one of my confidants in the NFL. I can go to him anytime. Hey, are my are my eyes deceiving me on this guy? Or no, okay, I'm right. Yeah, always am. Um, so you know, he he usually <laughs> kind of just uh he lets me know if I'm on the right course. And again, you know, very rarely do I not have the correct take on a prospect of the NFL draft. Very simple with Artie this year, though. Uh, kind of just so I, you know, damn near uh, gave me a heart attack, knocked me off my feet. He doesn't have his mustache right now. Sorry, what? Wow. What? Yeah. Well, yeah. Sorry, it, I, I, you know what? I did the exact same thing, kind of double taked, and I just said, listen, Artie, got to grow the fucking mustache back, okay? If you want anyone in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to respect you, you got to grow the mustache back, okay? Everyone's saying, hey, you know, Artie and Kenny Pickett had a great meeting down in Florida. That's fine and dandy. That's great. You don't grow the mustache back, it doesn't fucking matter what you do, okay? Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how Kenny plays. We all know that mustache has you know, uh, third world or fourth world powers, okay? <laughs> that thing could get Kenny Pickett to be an NFL, you know, an, an all-pro, a Pro Bowl type player. If he has a clean upper lip next year, look for the Pittsburgh Steelers to do the exact same fucking thing they've done the last six or seven years, kind of limp into the playoffs, nine and eight, Jeez, and get geez. embarrassed in the first round. Oh. Artie, do the right thing, okay? Do the right thing. Kinda You've agree. had time to kind of reflect and you know, be on the other side of the world, be in different places, kind of enjoy your time uh, now that you're not an NFL head coach anymore. But Pittsburgh needs you, okay? And they need that mustache. And I think he knows that, Pat. Yeah, I think there was somebody from Pittsburgh that told him that immediately upon mm-hmm. you telling him that as well, Mad Mo. That, is there a city better suited for an offense coordinator with an incredible mustache? There is not. Better than Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? There's not, no, I don't not. think, either. I think he understands that. Sounds like he understands that from mm-hmm. me listening to you talk at him, by the way. Hey, Boston Connor has a question for you, Matt. Yeah, Matt Mel, first of all, thank you for the kind words on the hair. Your flow also looks fantastic. But, you know, the combine is really the NFL spring break. Everyone knows that. Everyone's mingling after the events of the day, you know, are done. They're going out. They're having a good time. Have you experienced the nightlife? Have you been able to try all the things that Indianapolis has to offer, or have you heard anything about what everyone has been doing around the city this week? No, yeah, I've absolutely experienced it. You know, I think everyone just assumes, oh, you know, Mad Mel Kuyper, this guy's the hardest son of, uh, hardest working son of a bitch in the NFL, and I am. There's yep. no two ways about that, but that doesn't mean you don't need to, you know, blow off a little steam. So, everyone always talks about, oh, you know, Peyton Manning's kind of got his own private room at, you know, St. Elmo's, one of the most historic steakhouses in the United States. I have my own goddamn floor at that place, okay? <laughs> so, I go in, you know, kind of just, they they treat me like a goddamn chic, you know, kind of <laughs> put, put me on a pillow, lift me up so I don't have to, you know, walk back to my <laughs> <laughs> room, do that kind of stuff. I will say Indianapolis, great city, okay? Great hosting city. Don't, don't need to really walk outside. Uh, honestly, uh, there, there weren't too many homeless people down there. I don't what? know if they, you know, kind of did the same Good. thing that they did a couple years of the Super Bowl in L.A., get the street sweeper out and kind of <laughs> shovel all the poop and the homeless people just Smart. out of there so that, you know, all these uh, different GMs and town evaluators don't have to deal with it. Uh, great restaurants. I am a little disappointed in the lack of titty bars around the circle downtown. Okay, everyone knows you know. It's the middle I, of downtown. That's fair. Well, you know, yeah, it's the middle it's of downtown. True. But uh, who doesn't love a good titty bar? You know, right Jeez. next to a steakhouse. Jeez. I know I do. Jeez. Um, so you know, outside of that, uh, it, it's great being able to kind of rub elbows, rub shoulders with all the different uh, you know personnel, team personnel. But at the same time, you know, we're not here to, to play grab ass, okay? I know certain guys love playing grab ass down there. Hey, let's, let's go get dinner with this guy and this guy, and we can joke and we can laugh and take pictures. This is, this is a fucking work trip for me, okay? All right, so I'm not, I'm not there to have fun and play games, okay? So, yeah, you can glean some information from the nightlife. Uh, we're, we're, here to, we're here to put food on the table for our family, okay? So that's, that's the way I, uh, I treat the cop on. Now, I heard from one of the scouts as we were walking by them in the halls, and I happened to be walking alongside of you or whatever, Mad Mel, 
Did you take a meeting in the bathroom of the Oakmont? Is that what happened? What? Did I hear about that? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Uh, this week, uh, the Oakmont kind of turned into my place of business. Uh, I walk in there, and and not only is the atmosphere lovely, uh, the uh, the food's delicious. I actually heard. I, I'm listen. I'm not a big espresso martini guy. I know wow. you got a couple in the office. I heard that they actually use real Nicaraguan coffee beans in the espresso <laughs> martini, which True is a, story. oh yeah, it's just unbelievable play. You know, you don't see a lot of places doing that. So after this weekend, uh, yeah, I, I guess you could. You could basically say I'm the fucking co-owner of the Oakmont. That place is mine. Might as well put, you know, Mad Mel's the Oakmont right up, right up on the marquee because uh, because that's my joint now. All right. Well, hopefully we'll uh, stop getting cars towed from that parking lot right out front. If you can maybe maybe do that, because we do like to go to that place. Yeah, you know, it's it nice. It's yeah, nice. it's a very nice place. The Oakmont is fantastic. Yeah, love it. But boy, those tow trucks seems to be—they're pretty quick. They are yeah. quick. Yeah. Yeah. Tough, to, tough to park down there if you're not an ant. So uh, yeah, you know maybe they should figure something out. But again, you know that's that's the kind of long term stuff. I'm more of the uh, the day to day uh, yeah, yeah. weekend guy. Of course, so. yeah, you're a grinder. We exactly. know that, Mel. Exactly. Uh, Tone's got a question for you. Yeah, Mr. Mad. Um, I think everyone, not just me, holds you in the highest regard as for as far as your judgment of character, your judgment of brains, your judgment of an overall human. Uh, so my question there for you is, who was who were you most impressed with uh, when you were talking at people at the Combine this weekend? Well, that's a good question, Tone. Uh, you know, obviously talked to a lot of uh, big-time movers and shakers, you know, guys who are in high-level positions who uh, have kind of been uh, waiting on my words of wisdom with bated breath uh, ever since they got into the league. One guy who really knocked my socks off, i got to say it, Indianapolis Colts head coach Shade Steichen. Wow. Yes! Ooh, really? and, I'll, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Okay, listen, everybody, uh, they love Gardner Minshew. Oh, he's got the mullet. He's got the mustache. The Fu Manchu. He lives in the conversion van. He's an NFL quarterback Moxie, who lives yeah. in a conversion van. Ha ha, that's great stuff. We love it. That's awesome. You're an NFL quarterback. Buy a fucking house. But that's neither here. That's, that's <laughs> neither, that's, hey, listen, that's neither here nor there. Okay? Let's be very, very clear about what Gardner Minshew is. Now, I understand he went to the Pro Bowl last year. He almost got the uh, Indianapolis Colts into the playoffs. Wow. Obviously, we all remember that very difficult loss at home in the Lod House Thank against you. the Houston Texans Stratos. last week of the season. Lod House, Lod House. But Stratos. I had Gardner Minshew as a D-plus grade coming into the draft when I evaluated him initially. Shane Steichen... Got that guy to a fucking Pro Bowl, okay? <laughs> you look at the Indianapolis Colts roster on paper, that's a four-win football team, okay? Simple as that. But because Shade Steichen's braid is so fucking big, it's oozing out of his ears and dripping onto his, you know, Colts pullover that he's wearing on Sundays, if Anthony Richardson could stay healthy, and I believe he can because of the coaching of Shade Steichen and obviously his previous experience with a guy like Jalen Hurts who made a massive jump his second season to start a quarterback. I think the Indianapolis Colts are a dark horse team to make a wow. deep run in the playoffs deep. this year because Shane Steichen's brain is about as big as Albert Einstein's. I and like that. Mine, maybe, as well. I like, well, I don't know if anybody has a brain as big as yours. Uh, speaking of being big, I like to hear that about Shane Steichen, but there's this one photo I saw. I, I don't know who took it. Uh, is Kevin O'Connell 10 feet tall? And how <laughs> tall are you, Matt Mel? What the hell's going <laughs> Listen, on? I'm a, I'm a very respectable 5'11", 6 foot on a good day. You're right. Sure. Kevin O'Connell made me look like I was 4'8". I mean, is that son of a bitch 18 feet tall? <laughs> How did that not, that guy not play in the NFL for 18 years? Should have been a starting quarterback for, you know, I mean, goddamn, he could basically with his wingspan, he could throw it and then just reach his arm down to the goal <laughs> line and catch it himself without moving his feet. It's unbelievable. Again, love Kevin O'Connell. Don't love that he made me look like a fucking pipsqueak in that picture, but that's what's going to happen when you're, uh, you know, with the best of the best that the NFL has to offer at the NFL Combine. All right, last question here from Ty. Go ahead, Ty. Well, hello, Mad Mel. I, uh... Hope you're doing well this morning. It's good to see you as always. Um, listen, I'm just curious. I noticed that in every single one of those pictures you took, you're wearing the same suit. So I'm just curious. Did, did Were you only at the Combine one day? Did you only work one day? I mean, you talk about how you're the hardest working guy ever. You're there one day? Like, what, what's going on there? Well, I don't know, Ty. I mean, are we in Milan at the fucking fashion show? I'm there for work, asswipe. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, if, if you want to go and play grab ass with people, oh, hey, look at my my Versace suit. Look at my, you know. Listen, all right, very simple. Yes, I wore the same suit and uh, and shirt combo and tie combo every single day. You ever heard of Steve Jobs, okay? 
turtleneck every single day. Take one decision out of your day. It's a very beautiful, nice suit. $79.99 off the rack at Macy's, okay? Very, very Ooh. dependable. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm not there uh, trying to, you know, get all the girls to look at me and say, oh, geez, Mad Mel, this guy's fucking sexy. I'm there to let these NFL GMs and pro personnel, you know, staff know, hey, this is what you got to do to win a Super Bowl. I mean, the fact that you'd even ask that question tells me how big of a dipshit you are and how much, just, honestly, just how clueless you are. So I won't be taking any fucking questions from you for a long time, oh, my oh, friend. Oh, jeez. You know what, as a matter of fact, fuck this, I'm done. Okay, I've given you guys another this bullshit. Whoa. Fuck you guys. Whoa. What? Whoa. What did I oh, say? What the? Ty, way to go. Come on. Is Mad Mel still there? You know, I don't got to do this. You know, they act like I don't got anything to do. I mean, I got hours and hours of film I could be looking at. These fucking assholes <laughs> are treating me, you know, like it's a stand-up comedy special. Like, I don't know what the hell's going on. I'm fucking sick of it. Okay? I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore. Fuck them. Whoa. Gee. Uh, sorry. Ty. He's still... Look how you made Mad Mel feel. That's an honest question. I thought it was a good conversation. Nah, yeah. you, you did attack him a little bit. You attacked him a little bit. I think he overreacted, but that's classic Mad Mel. I think we can, you know, be, besides the way that thing abruptly ended. My, what was that all about? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, professionalism maybe, you know, just a, a tad bit. But sorry, draft season's Mad Mel season. Yeah, he sure yeah, is. I think we got some stuff out of there before the the terrible ending. You're going to have to make that right with him, I think. Yeah. I, we all probably yeah. were. He, and it is kind of a stand-up routine, to be honest with you. <laughs> a little bit. Like, like a little he bit. said that at the end, I, and I hope he doesn't take any offense to it. He's the best in the game. Yeah. Yeah, He's man, the absolute he best like, in the game. Always. But there was a lot of good stuff that we could take out of there. He agreed with the Artie Smith type thing. But how about whenever he was talking about Shane Steichen's big brain, boys? Look out. Did you hear that? Yeah, I did. Did you hear, hear that? that? I did. Did you hear that? I did. Did you hear that in the back? Yep. Okay, we don't know what's real and what's not real whenever Mad Mel Kuyper is talking to us about anything, but I heard him say that Shane Steichen's brain is a big one. And also, Kevin O'Connell did look like he was Massive. 20 feet tall in that. Joining us now, a guy who finally got internet service back. Obviously, he's, you know, it could be us, too. We have no idea. Yeah, sure. Ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hawk. Hey, hey, oh. A.J., Mad Mel is firing early in draft season, bub. I did not uh, see it ending that way. Unfortunately, <laughs> Ty's question really seemed to set him off. Mel was, all, Mel was about ball. That's about it, right? He didn't care about fashion. He didn't care about anything else. I think he was wearing the same suit today, Ty. Yeah. You didn't even mention that. Yeah. I, 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 it might be just his draft season suit. That might be his thing. Listen, oh. I made a mistake, okay? I'm big enough to admit that, but, you know, to to make that kind of, you know, proclamation <laughs> and get all pissy like that, that's, uh, yeah, I, I, I'll make it right. I'll make it right. All right, AJ, let's talk to you about some of the stuff that, you know, we kind of acknowledged at the Combine. Fastest group of humans of all time. Did you see that as well? And do you ever think to yourself, because you ran, what, 4-4 four, four, this guy ran? Yeah, 4-4. 4-4 mm -hmm. four, four. Four, four at 245, I think, uh -huh. is what he was at. So Bad knee. 4-4 at 245, yeah, with a guy, you're talking about Caleb Williams said I'm not doing medical. AJ was actually just lying right to people's faces about his medical, okay? Ended up being number, right? 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 Not lying. I'm just, I'm not doing their work for them. If they if they want to see if I have surgeries or I have any cartilage in my knee, you can check it out yourself. I like it. Okay, so we're holding gonna, why information. Why would you volunteer? Why would you volunteer? Yeah, you know, it's my left knee hurts a little bit, but my right ankle really hurts. No, say nothing. Say you feel amazing. The medical thing with Caleb was a big conversation. I immediately just thought of you. I was like, AJ was like, yeah, you want to figure it out, figure it out. Good, Good luck. luck. There's doctors. It's all... You know what I mean? It's out they here. Do, and they do. That's why they make you get 15 MRIs and have everybody look at you. Yeah, they'll look into you uh, deeply. But anyways, AJ, whenever we walk around this combine and we just start hearing everybody kind of chatter, it's like humans have evolved to a point where we're faster than we've ever been before. Not only the fastest 40 in the history in 421, but six players run a sub 4-4 in 40-plus inch vert. It's like humans are so explosive right now. If... And I'm not saying this is going to happen in our lifetimes, but it certainly feels like with the chatter on here. If the aliens were to come down right now, mm -hmm. and it was to be some sort of decathlon mm -hmm. to see who, you know, if sports are involved at all, it's like, feels like the human species is at its peak right now. They are moving. Not only the 4-2-1, obviously, the fastest in history, the NFL combine, laser-timed, can't cheat it at all with hand time. It is absurd how fast this 170-pound man, 165-pound man ran 40 yards. It's like humans have evolved to a point where we are so big. Tavondre Sweat, 366, AJ, moving like that. It's bananas, brother. It doesn't seem real when you watch it. I was just watching some of the drills, too. Like, yeah, the times are off the charts. I was watching the running backs go through the little running back drill or catch ball like into the flat and turn it up, and I'm thinking, 
These guys look, first off, they're so, like, Blake Corum, so stout, so strong, his lower body, like, everything about him, I'm thinking, like, how do you bring these guys down when they get a full head of steam? You see their, their jump cuts, everything they're doing. They just move, like, it's just not natural how well they move, I feel like. Well, and how about whenever you're talking about flipping the hips with these corners yeah. and, like, yeah. these wide receivers' body control nowadays uh-huh. is just, like, standard operating procedure, where it used to not be like that. Like, it used to be, like, special to be, and I'm not saying guys weren't, you know, phenomenal at football back in the day. But it feels like with humans getting to the point that we are and athletes getting to the point that we're getting, with the work habits earlier in life that people are learning, like, these seven-on-sevens for these wide receivers and quarterbacks and everything, like, in corners, are, like, in one-on-ones that go viral and content. Like, people want to work in high school because it's content. Like, want to go, I want to get my feet better. I want to make more absurd catches. I want to practice every single day because that's just making content. It's like there's almost a full different mindset on how you become great from these youngs who are, like, so mature. Here's Roma Dunze who wanted to get a 6.6 on a three-cone <laughs> drill and stuck around until there was nobody else on the field afterwards. He ended up with a 6.8. I do not know what a good score is or what isn't a good score, but it's like – these dudes are better, younger, faster, what? quicker, more mature, too, because the NIL stuff yep. that kind of has has hit them at a much younger age. It's a different – they say different generations. Like, this one is a different generation, it feels like, AJ. Yeah, it sure feels like they're moving like it. Also, like the the leadership and camaraderie, you watch how they're, they're ending drills, they're all running down together and kind of mm-hmm. celebrating together when a lot of those dudes are meeting each other for the first time once they show up at the combine. They don't all know each other. Yet, I guess, but man, it's what like where do we is there a ceiling? Is there a ceiling on the 40? What are, what are we, are we gonna see? Someone break Isn't four? there a book or a one eight? Is that oh. gonna be? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, because yeah. I think there was some track person that did it, ran a very fast 40, a track person. Um, and they were shown it on the internet. I should have remembered it, but yeah, what is the fastest that a football player now he's obviously a little bit undersized, right? That's 170 yeah. pounds or whatever. It's like, if he gets in the right offensive system, though, that doesn't matter. Nope. That doesn't matter, no. especially if he knows how to avoid hits. You know what I mean, AJ? Which, they, if you want any longevity, you will. And, and watch any of the kind of slighter frame receivers out there. Like, they know. They have the instincts, the knack to find a way. Like, they're not ever really taking big shots. They're not just stepping out of bounds. They just have such a great feel for where the defenders are. They know how to get down. Here's Xavier Worthy right in our grill. Jeez, what a play. Us losing our minds on the sideline <laughs> with Matthew McConaughey, a moment that I'll remember in my dying days <laughs> happening. It was absurd <laughs> down there at the Cotton Bowl right in front of our faces, but it's like – I'm excited to watch these guys work. Oh, I'm yeah. excited to see who makes it, who doesn't make it. I'm excited to see the surprises mm-hmm. of this draft season with the lack of people working out. Now, last year, C.J. Stroud threw, you know, so that's a massive ordeal that he threw and had the year that he had. If you go back, Patrick Mahomes, I believe he threw. Tom Brady, obviously, mm-hmm. threw. Lamar Jackson threw. Andrew Luck, RG3, both did not throw. Peyton Manning did not throw. Kyler Murray did not throw. So it's like, everybody always wonders if the Combine's going to continue to be something with people opting out. Mm Kind of just like bowl season. Mm -hmm. I think people are going to watch. Did you see the crowd that was in Lucas Oil Stadium, AJ? Yeah, that's it. When did they start letting fans in? A couple uh, years ago? A couple years back, I think it was ex- like uh, it was an exclusive group. I think like the first time it was like 100 people. Yep. A couple hundred people were allowed in there. It's like a, a wild thing that you get to experience for once in a lifetime. Then it kind of expanded a little bit. I had heard from nobody of any like decision-making importance, I don't think, said that a lot of the football guys, scouts, were a little bit like, all right, because they were playing music as well. Yeah. Oh, okay. While the drills were happening, and there was fans in there, so like some of the scouts that we're talking about living and dying uh-huh. with guys that are the regional on the road scouts living in hotels, scouting somebody in hopes that that person becomes a big star, so that they can maybe climb the ranks of the scouting world and potentially go be a general manager. So I think they've tried to find a happy medium. All I know is. That place was fucking packed. Yeah, so many half people. Of the stadium. It was absurd. It was loud too at different times. Deep balls, obviously mm-hmm. enjoyed. You talked about the camaraderie. It's like, did you hear the crowd every time they ran down there? The crowd was like, hey, good workout, boys. Yeah, yeah. Good workout, boys. There was obviously some Michigan contingency there because of 18 yeah, Michigan Wolverines being there and working out. Saw some of the local heroes. Purdue had some fans, obviously, there. But a lot of people were just from Indianapolis that were like, 
love ball. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm very thankful that we got to see it and very thankful that Indianapolis still continues to host the NFL Combine because we appreciate it. The economy appreciates it. Mm -hmm. Everything. It is a beautiful event down here. Yeah, I mean, we pulled up and it, obviously it's not as crazy as like a Colts game downtown, but like there are people tailgating. There were a bunch of cars around there. Like yes. we had to make traffic. Yeah, we had to make like a pass around the stadium to get to actually get in there. Like it was I mean, I, and obviously, you know, when you when you open it up free to fans and they have to just go online, and I think it's kind of like a raffle type thing, but, like, still the amount of people that were down there, I mean, and even, like, downtown, not not right next to the stadium, like, there's, like, a, a, a palpable buzz down there. Like, it, it's it's really cool to see. Yeah, I don't know how the football people feel about it, AJ. Yeah, probably don't mean, love it. Like, how would, how would Bill Belichick have handled it? Do you think he would enjoy that if he wanted to go, hey, I'm going to get a closer look and sit down in the uh, in the concourse somewhere and he's surrounded by a bunch of fans? So listen to this. What they started this year, and I don't know how I, – actually, I don't know because I'm not down there as much, but with how many fans there were, you know, the NFL Network feed goes out on the Jumbotrons. Yep. So, like, Jerry Jones got booed in there. Oh, yes. oh no. You know yeah. what I mean? So Jerry's, Jerry's oh. trying to do business, you know, trying to find the next cowboy – have been doing the combine in the way that the combine has been done for like the last 40 years. Yeah. Just kind of real chill, nonchalant. And all of a sudden, he's getting his ass booed. Yeah. Like, oh, what the hell is how? What the hell is this all about? A little baby face, little heel thing at the combine. I do wonder how Bill Belichick, because that place would have, oh, the oh boos would have been yeah. so loud. And Bill Belichick, I'm not going back to that thing ever. Mm -hmm. and maybe. Did any coaches not go? Did any head coaches not go this year? So yeah. we, we had heard through the grapevine that that is the. That's the next. Yeah. They started doing that. Didn't like McVay not go last mm -hmm. year? Wasn't or Bill, last year either. Bill didn't. Yeah, because you can get the tape. And they said certain guys would just were coming in on like Sunday and just staying for Sunday and then leaving. But yeah, like a couple of the people we talked to, it's like one thing. It's one thing watching live, but like you literally can watch the entire thing on NFL Network. Football guys were there. All of us were watching. The jumbo truck, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jo yeah, which was the, the you know, because that's where the clock was, that's where everything was. So you you get to feel it, which is what a live event is. Mm -hmm. But watching it, you kind of get a similar thing, you know. And it was it was cool. It, whenever I mean, I'm chit chatting right there with Mr. Ganey, yep. mm -hmm. who's the assistant general manager of the Buffalo Bills, and uh, yeah, that was an interesting moment. Somebody in there said, "Yo," pretty much that we were up there because they don't tell you as Coach McDaniel, right. You know. <laughs> yeah, he was not happy. He looks so cool. So cool, yeah. dude. Always. I thought the way he handled that was cool. Yes. Like, I think the other football people probably were like, when they met for dinner later or a drink, they're like, you handled that well. Mm -hmm. Nothing you can do. Yeah, you, you handled that well. 